Hello, I'm Jim Chapin, and I'm here in your living room or in your store or in your school, and I would like to talk to you a little bit about the techniques of drumming, especially as they affect the snare drum, especially as, effect, as they affect the way you approach hitting the drum. Now, I studied about a little over 50 years ago, I started studying with an old man named Sanford Moeller, very tough old man. I went to him and uh, I said, here I am, Mr. Moeller, I'm ready to study with you. He says, and I, he says, well, play for me a little bit. So I played, playing a year and a half. He said, kid, you don't know anything, do you? Well, that was the start of a, of a delightful friendship and a very difficult uh, seven months because he really put me through the ringer. But I came out the other end, and at that time he said, you've done it, Jim. You've uh, done everything I've asked you and more. And uh, I, would like to, I would like to say that you don't have to come back anymore. I said, come back every month or so, because I want to see how you're doing. But as far as you've learned the molar technique as well as anybody I've ever had. I said, thank you very much, sir. Now, this guy was the kind of a guy that, that uh, would, uh, he made drums. He made beautiful uh, old, uh, in fact, the U.S. Army band still has some of his, uh, of his snare drums. And he took a snare drum one day in the, the late 20s and uh, uh, about uh, the 30th of June, I guess, and he walked to Boston and marched in the, in the July 4th parade in Boston and turned around and came home drumming all the way. And they, people said, why did you do that? He says, I love to drum and I like to walk in the country. So that, <laughs> that's the kind of a man he was. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some of the techniques. I'm going to lead into some of the techniques, I should say, that he showed me. Uh, first, I'm going to start by exploring a little bit of the, the French timpani and the German timpani and some other ramifications. And I'm um, tell you that basically, I'm a traditional grip player, but that I, most of my teaching is done to match grip players, and I say that, and you realize that I'm using pretty heavy sticks, and you'll say, why is he using those heavy sticks? I use any stick. I use sticks twice as heavy as this sometimes. I use sticks that are like little pencils. If I'm playing with a piano trio, the stick has no significance. When people say, practice with the stick you play with, I would say, which stick is that? When, when, today I'm playing with one stick, tomorrow I'll be playing with another. So uh, these are moderately heavy, but they're not extraordinarily heavy. They're like, uh, oh my God. I could play a street job with this or I could play a rock job. I wouldn't want to play a jazz job because they're a little too heavy. Uh, the first thing uh, uh, was the old French timpani method presuppose that you're going to use a lot of fingers because you're rolling across between the thumb and the forefinger and you're playing pretty much uh, parallel. The sticks are parallel. They're not at an angle like this. They're, they're, and accents are made sort of with a little sort of a, of, a, of a squeeze and a push. So you're rolling across the forefingers like this. This has one great advantage. It's right in front of you, and the singles are well, done very well this way because your your fingers are right under the uh, the thumb, and you can you can play fairly rapidly this way. I don't play very well that way, but uh, it's uh, it's part of my technique and part of the thing I'm still learning. Now, you would say that this had a lot to do with fingers. The, the, these fingers in, in under the thumb are working uh, quite uh, uh, significantly. But in the German timpani method, which means that the hands are on top, like this, you're working more from wrist pronation, even though the fingers can en enter into it very uh, conveniently at, at certain times. For instance, now my fingers are working. Here they're not. The accent here is also kind of a little push. And the sticks, instead of being a parallel, are at sort of a 45 degree angle. Almost all uh, snare drum 
teachers in the uh, who came from the symphonic school play the play or t teach this way because it's very accurate. You're right. At, you're 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 pointed at the drum. The sticks are are uh, played with a with a uh, kind of a little severe kind of a, a push accent, but the disadvantage of this is that you have to change it to go fast. You, you can't do this very fast. You can't do this very fast. What you have to do, and what all players do, even if they don't know about it, is change from this. And watch, watch, there's a subtle change going to take place now. Right here. See, from this, one 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 one. I changed. Watch my watch my this wrist right here. Now watch the change. Watch it now again. Now watch it. Obviously that's going to go faster because I'm only making one motion. Same over here. I can't do that. Fast. Most people do this automatically. They might, may think they play this way. They think they play, play with the German timpani method, but right here, they're going to change. Otherwise, they don't get fast. They, get, they, they become like the, they become, their arms become pistons. They don't get that relaxation that I'm getting here. Now, what am I doing that's so different? Well, instead of this, I'm making a little flick with my wrist here, like that. That means I've started a sequence of a sequence of beats. I'm not going one, 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 one. I'm going one, one. Now watch the difference again. One, 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 one. Now watch the motion here. Three motions or one motion. Or this. Most difference now, or this. Now remember, I don't play match. I don't play uh, match grip. I play traditional grip. That motion there is not one 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 one, but this. That motion. It's. If I was going to do this and teach it uh, in the way Moeller taught it. I would say, imagine you've got heavy crankcase grease on the tips of these fingers, and you're going to shake it off at the ground. This is with a traditional hold now. It's not a push like this. This is a push. Or a, or a, so my, one, my three hits would be just a loud tap and two other things. Now, Moeller called this the downstroke in that the hand was going down. Don't confuse this with other nomenclatures when people say this is a downstroke and this is an upstroke. It is, but the mole, in, the molar, in the molar lexicon, the mom, in, the, in the nomenclature of the molar system, this was a downstroke, this is a downstroke. Now, I'll show you what the upstroke was. Here is the, here's the down, downstroke, and then there's a tap, this is in triplets. I'm dealing in triplets because it's the easiest hand-to-hand -hand motion. Now let me take that apart. See that one motion in the right hand? One motion, but three hits. So I'm hitting this whipping stroke, then a tap almost occurs. Then I have to get this stick in this position again to make that whipping stroke. So I hit going away. This is what he called the upstroke. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. Now you want to no, notice something. You don't see this. You're not seeing down. Because it's easier. You can do it this way. I can do it this way it, out of the German timpani method. But it doesn't have the freedom it has out in here. See that one motion is much harder to do this. One, 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 but this is easy. Same over here. 
Here is here is the traditional left hand. Down, tap, hit going away. Hit going towards the pad, a tap, and then hit going away. Notice after that whipping stroke, I'm accepting a rebound. So that if we do it together, I'm hitting two downstrokes, molar downstrokes. This doesn't mean that you have to suspend your idea of what a downstroke and an upstroke is if you heard it from other people. This is, you're speaking about the molar, the molar, molar naming of these things. This is, a, this is a whipping stroke, it's a downstroke. I'm doing a series of downstrokes now. Now I'll turn, I'll, I'll turn this into a triple. Watch this because this, this is, looks pretty ridiculous to take it apart to this extent. But this is how Moe taught it. Now, I'll tell you what the advantage of it is. Say you have a car, and you have a pretty nice car, and it goes up to 60 miles an hour, no problem. 60 develops a little shake. So you have a friend who's a mechanic. The mechanic says, give me that car, let me look at it. He says, there's a lot more in that car than you're getting from it now. So you give him the car, and he puts the, the machine on it, and he times it, and he gets the cylinders when, when they're uh, when you give it to him, the cylinder sound, you get it back up two days later and you hear you get out on the road and you take it up to what you think is 60 miles an hour. You look down at the speedometer, your foot's been in the same place. You're not, you haven't changed anything except the motor is now synchronized. Everything is going together. You put to, it's put together, and you're not no longer wor working on 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 six or six cylinders instead of eight. It's going like this, not going like this anymore. You're going. So you're up to 90 miles an hour, and you look at the thing. How is that possible? Well, that's what that's what Sanford Mola did to, did for me 50 years ago. He made me do this. Okay, here is here is one hand at a time. Downstroke, big whip, whap. You see how I'm coming back? Coming right back to here and stopping. Now, there's no, my, my, my arm hasn't moved after this. Tap, up, down, tap, up. Now, you see, I'm not coming back like this. He didn't want to see the palm of your hand. That He had that in common with another teacher named J. Burns Moore, of which I'll speak more of later. Down, tap, up, down, Tap, up. Same over here. Your whipping stroke. Same match grip. Now, if you could hypnotize yourself, you could almost believe when you look at this video, say, that old man's not really playing those sticks. There's a force field in here, and those sticks are just toggles. He's sticking them in the force field, and they're playing themselves. He's just holding on to them, because it's halfway true. I'm, I'm, see that one motion? That one motion starts so much. See that one little motion there? It's that little flick. Now. 
If I'm doing it loud, it's like throwing a ball at the ground and wanting to bounce up to the third story. If I do it a little softer, it's like dribbling a basketball. If I do it quite softly, it's like flicking water off the tips, the tips of my fingers. Same over here. I'm going, getting ahead of myself. That's an exercise you're going to see later. Now, if anybody tells you that there's only one way to hold the drumstick. You have to, you have to look at them in disbelief because there is no more wandering thing than the fulcrum of a of a uh, uh, of a handhold when you're really playing loud one time and soft another time. Now, watch just from what we talked about so far. Watch how the fulcrum has changed here now. Right here, I'm doing. I'm playing. The fulcrum is out in here. For the, I'm playing in a sort of a French timpani method now. In my right hand. Now, if I want to get a little loud in my right hand, look where it's changed to. I'm no longer holding it out here. I'm holding it with this this finger around it, sort of like that. No longer out in here. In here. Now watch when I'm. Now this is quite a bit different, though it has has certain certain uh, salient qualities that are the same as the molar system. Because there's, there's, there's only a few ways to accent well, and this is the best the best of them as far as getting a loud, strong sound and getting a continuous hit. See what I'm, I'm doing is I'm doing somewhat the same in a sort of a French uh, French hold way. I'm getting the same kind of of an accent as I got out here. It's not as satisfactory for this particular thing because the French hold is better for single strokes and better for crescendos. Not as good as, as, uh, and not as good as for, for accenting as, as the MOLA system. But then again, here, here's split the difference. We're in the German timpani mode now. Now I'm doing the German, I'm doing the German timpani mode. Inside this German timpani method, see, I'm doing it purely, pretty purely now, one, 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 one. But I can also, in spite of the fact that I'm not really out here in this other 90 degree position that I'll talk about in a minute, in the, I'm in this 45 position, I can almost get a pretty good by drooping my hand instead of playing, instead of playing with a flat hand like this. I watch the droop, watch it and droop in my wrist now. See, this is almost. This is almost pure molar, except that it's coming up this way too much. Now molar, and also in concert with that man I talked about before, named Jay Burns Moore, didn't want to see the inside of your hand. They, they didn't want to see that. They wanted to see the back of your hand. Now, if I'm out here, watch what happens. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing wrist pronation. I'm not doing this. I'm coming up with a forearm turn. Now watch. Wrist pronation, I can only get to this point. This is, this is a symptom uh, or symptomatic of the German, German timpani that you're coming up this way. And this is what you want to see at the top. You want to see the inside of your hand. Moeller and Jay Burns Moore didn't want to see that. They wanted the, they wanted the, the uh, roll out like this so it was forearm turning. Not this. They wanted the forearm to turn this way a little bit. Now, the reason for that is that you can only go to here. If you're holding the sticks relatively tight, you can only go to there playing German timpani. Now, watch the difference now. Watch, watch, and I'm going to droop my wrists. I'm going to get out into here now. Now I'm playing what, what is in essentially what Burns Moore taught, which is like a big tap, which he... I, I liken to a karate chop. Like this. Boom. Boom. But you're here. Now he did, they didn't want to see this. Watch me now. I'm in the Burns Moore, in the Burns Moore tradition, but I'm playing it wrong. See where I am? 
I can't, I'm, I'm back in this position. I can't come out all the way because I'm, my wrists won't go this far back. However, if I do this, I can go out to infinity. See, because I'm rolling my forearms. But I'm, I'm not way out like that. That's too far. You only come up the, to here and then it works fine up to there, but then you have to roll out. You can't come up this way and then go like that because that's as far as you can go. You can do it, but it inhibits you. But Burns Moore and Moeller, they were exponents of military drumming. As such, they really wanted to be able to hit. Well, there's no bigger, you can get a very big hit this way. Now, the thing that happens with Jay Burns Moore, though, the same thing happens with Jay Burns Moore as happened when, I, when you go fast in the Germany temperament. You have to make that little, that little adjustment. You have to make, you, you have to, bow this wrist and get that one for three. This is in triplets. I'm talking about triplet, hand-to-hand -hand triplets. I said the easiest hand-to-hand -hand motion is a triplet. So if I'm doing this, you see what I get here. Now I'm doing German timpani, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not making any, any of that little whipping stroke. I want to start making the whipping stroke, it relaxes. Same thing happens out here. Burns more here, fine. But if you get faster, watch what it turns into. Watch what it turns, watch the whipping stroke. Now that is, even though it starts off as Burns Moore's karate chop, turns into the molar downstroke, tap, down, tap, up. Now here's Burns Moore, molar. Again, Burns Moore. A karate chop for an accent. Turn it and I'm going to let it assume its own identity. And the, uh, its own identity is it turns into this. Not, you can't do that that long. You have to turn it into this. But the great thing about, <laughs> about Jay Burns Moore was that he knew that would happen. He didn't teach it. But he knew that it, that, that would have to happen. That it would have to turn into what Moeller taught from the beginning. Remember what, remember what I said Moeller, Moeller was? It's down, tap. One motion. See the difference now there? Burns more, molar. See the difference in the, in the way the wrist, the wrist is doing this, the other one's doing that. Now, soft. I could turn this, I could, this is, this is, because of the position here, this is, German timpani. I call it German. But I can do that little little thing. I, I would call this this a modified soft Burns Moore. Because it's out here as opposed to this. See, this comes up like this, this comes up like this. See the difference? One is this, one is this. Okay, now. You can see Watch the position of my hand now. If I'm doing it very lightly, where am I? Well, I'm way out in here, in that position I talked about before. If I roll it back here, so it has some kinship with this. See, if I just roll it back, I've, I've discovered this fairly recently, so it's not, I mean, that proves how, how, how many things you can probably discover for yourself by not being caught in what I have to say or what anybody else has to say. Think for yourself. And if somebody does, shows you something that's good, believe it or discard it. But examine it. Now this is, this is basically the light hole for French timpani. But it's also, if I move the thumb over here, a light hole that I could use for German timpani. And coming over here, it's a light hole for Burns Moore or Moeller. Right out in there. See, actually these fingers are all, I'm not, I'm, I have all my fingers around it, but the main pressure points are here. Now if I get a little louder though, that's not so good. Why? Because J. 
just to hold the stick in my hand when I get louder, I have to squeeze too hard. Now, so what do I do? Well, I got a little more friction if I move from here back to here and let it slip along the forefinger. Now, what does that mean in French timpani? Look, how many times have you seen guys play like that? This is a little louder. It's not as, it's not as delicate. It's a little louder, right? So now here. That's the that's the typical. It's actually, it's the watch the, the where the where the uh, in, in the French timpani here it is going across towards my body almost. Here the line is direct down here and it's going across this crease here. But it's kind of sliding when I'm doing it loud. It's kind of sliding along in here and the hole is here almost like that. Except out here I probably use two fingers, but it has elements of that. Think of the elements. See that, that finger there? Now watch it. Now I put all my fingers on it. It's not, not that I'm, not that I'm, I, I only use this finger, all these fingers, but the main hole is here, between here and here, and maybe a little reinforcement from this finger, and it slides along here. The, the fulcrum is no longer out here. Now it's not, not, only, not only, only changed back, it's also gone up one notch in my finger. It's gone back to here. So I've got that, so I, now watch that, watch it what, when I'm out here. Watch that same thing. My whole hand is around it, but I'm sliding along here. I'm no longer, I'm no longer in that position where I'm flicking water off the tips of my fingers. I'm more like dribbling a basketball. Now, <laughs> comes, comes the thing that's pretty funny. If stadium players, the guys that have to play with, with these huge, uh, against these huge amplifiers and have amplified drums themselves, but oftentimes they're not as powerful as the amplifiers for the, for the, uh, for the bass and the, and the guitars. They have to play so loud that just to hold a stick in their hand, they have to have a lot of meat on it. Otherwise, they get all kinds of calluses and everything. So, <laughs> you can see what I, how, how stiffly I have to hold this stick to hold it out in here, right? I have to, to squeeze it, I have to, but when, when I get it up in here a little bit, <clears throat> not so bad. See, I've got a little friction. So on the stick, my arm is pretty loose when I do that. Here, great control. Now this is not much control at all from here. <laughs> See this? But look where it is. It's way back in my hand. Mola called this a little finger hole. Now if you're thinking of, of uh, uh, some of the guys that play backhanded, They're pretty much doing that too. Look, but it, and if you're playing very loud uh, German timpani method right here, you would play back in back in here too. But out here, this is like taking a ball and trying to bounce it as high as possible. See where the stick is in my hand? Way back in here. Now, I am not going to follow all the way in because it stings your little finger like mad if you do it right. <laughs> so you do it one time and as you're up in here you're pulling from your little finger. You're, you're digging your little finger into it and pulling like this. So the stick goes way back to here. Or you see in, look where the, where, the, where the hand hole is. Way down in here and I don't let it go up in there. Because that, that ruins the whole thing. So I'm, so I'm, because it gets it too, too, uh, uh, too uncontrolled. But the control goes between here, here, and here. And you, and you see how Mola Major, Major used to make you do this and push down here and hold with your little finger. See how, how big that is? Same with the paradigm. Yeah, I can.